God bless my haters. God bless fake hoes. God bless these haters. Cause God don't leave no day. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. All I do is get it. All I, all I do is get it. We are back in full effect, and I hate my producer. I hate Emmanuel. I hate everybody. Because they just threw me in front of the camera. I haven't checked my weave. I haven't checked my lipstick. Nothing. This is how we started season this two. This is how we start season two. <laughs> you wanted a season two? Here you go. Here you go, bitch. <laughs> Welcome back to the comment section. We are excited and giddy. Oh as you God. can see, it is the month of October, the month of autumn, the month of change, changes. Libra season still. Libra season. <laughs> and I believe. <clears throat> I did, and I purposely planned to be on hiatus while it was my birthday to avoid a moment like this. But he did this on purpose. Yes, it was. It was my birthday. So now that it's, oh, we're getting songs. The black happy birthday. The black birthday. That means you are officially a black. Thank you, thank you. I'll be expecting my card. So I have to give you guys the tea. So what happened was we had this big surprise planned for Emmanuel, but because New York traffic sucks so much everyone's late so the cake is late the candle is late everything is late but we're gonna do it later on in the show he doesn't like thank it you, anyway thank you. i know i don't like that type of attention but he doesn't like the type of attention <sighs> that we were trying to give him, i appreciate it okay. how old are you boo? 34 34 34 in each street 34 do you feel different i don't feel different i feel like the older i get the less i want to celebrate <laughs> It, it, to like be that. honest, it's like that. To be honest, like I just yeah, wanted to be away. Yeah. It just so happened that this year we didn't have any holidays that landed around my birthday, so I couldn't take a weekend off or anything. You know, the DOE did, but charter schools, we, you guys had last Monday yes, and Tuesday did. off, Everyone right? Everyone was Jewish last week. <laughs> Thank you to all my Jewish brothers and sisters. We appreciate you. Um, I actually did research on Rosh Hashanah because I wanted to know what it was, but it's the New Year, the Jewish New Year. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. which kind of aligns, like what I said, with fall, because it's like a new beginning. Everything is fresh. The leaves are falling. Why is it in the fall? Do you know? I didn't get that far in Wikipedia, but I, I, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you on that. But, um, Interesting. It was so, what about the next one coming up? Did you research that one? The next Rosh Hashanah? No, we have Yom, Yom oh, Kippur. Oh, Yom Kippur. But then there's Columbus Day. We don't have Columbus Day off, do you? Yes, we do. We don't. Why? I have no idea, but we'll be there. We'll be there teaching away. When is it? Next Monday, right? Yeah, it's the 14th. Yeah. So we have the 9th off. Um, the 14th. The 14th off. And I think that's it for October. October. Yeah. But, I mean, it is what it is. Columbus Day shouldn't really be a real holiday. Anyway, it's nice to have days off, though, as a teacher. It's like <laughs> the days are strategically planned because it's only October, but we're already burned out. Believe it or not. Yeah. Like, and I work summer school, so I'm... I had no energy to start off the year. I just need another break, to be honest. Good thing, though, at my school, we get the entire Thanksgiving week off. Mm -hmm. We the don't. The entire week. So that's always very refreshing. We don't. They did give us back uh, December 23rd. Not give us back, but they decided to give us December 23rd off. Because usually it's we're working the 23rd. So God forbid if you're going out of town or you it's have... It's impossible. You can't. You're literally at the airport on Christmas Eve, which I always thought was so disrespectful. Do you know what day Christmas Eve lands on this year? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not it's sure. probably like the Monday or something. It's got to be something weird for them to have decided to do that. So to I, I believe guys. it's a Monday. Right. Or Christmas Eve is on a Tuesday, and I think the 23rd is on a Monday. So I we believe. have that weekend off before. It gives people extra time. You I see, these are so. things, as a teacher, like, you can't. Is it Tuesday? Christmas Eve Christmas is Tuesday. Eve. Oh, yeah. Christmas you Eve can't Tuesday, just... Then like take off right because you're teaching or whatever the case is you can't you have to wait until you have designated time off i mean you can take off but it's a day that they'll well deduct. with us if it's um, the, the chancellor's regulation is if it's a day before a holiday or a you day before take vacation off, right? you you have to have like a doctor's note or some kind of proof as to why you were out otherwise you can get in trouble like you get a letter to your file yeah whatever you, you want to be a rebel right <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. If your principal is cool, it's not that big of a deal. But sometimes, I mean, if you're from out of town, you know, you're trying to go see your family. It's so much more expensive to travel. I feel like on the day of, and on hectic. the day of, or the day before, right? Who wants hectic. to travel those days? And hectic. So I always feel like every time we take these hiatuses, is that a word? Hiatuses. Hiatus. 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 Hiat
we come back and so much has transpired. Like, the like president is about to be impeached. Right. Diane Carroll has passed away. Um, people being sent to jail for 10 years for killing people in their own house. People you know, that have testified in that trial have mysteriously, have mysteriously been murdered. Dead. I saw that yesterday. Like, what in the world is really going on here? What is going on? They killed him. And you know, come on. You just happened to come up dead after you testified to put this woman in jail for 10 years. Like, y'all got to be a little bit more. Oof. They're not strategic. Right. <laughs> that wasn't planned out properly. I mean, I'm not laughing. It's not funny, but you it's know, sick. We were talking about, you know, the family member that decided to console her and mm. hug her. And that was weird. <sighs> that was really weird. It was very weird. Like I understand the religious and the the religious side to it, right? Like the forgiveness aspect of letting a situation like that go. It just feels really strange. I can forgive you in my heart. I thought he was gonna hit her. I thought he was asking to like get close to her so that he would knock her out real quick. I, thought that I was expecting was about it, to but pop off. and a lot of people are really enraged by that because it just entered into this whole conversation about black people in general and how we sometimes are just too forgiving. We're too accepting. We've always been that way. We've always been that way, and it's like a lot of it is done under the guise of Christianity and you know being a good. Whatever you are, Muslim. We were Christian. conditioned to, we were conditioned. Like, think back to, like, the time of slavery, right? Religion was all we had. All we they, had. they were pushing that on us, though, because they knew that if we had something to believe in, we wouldn't lose hope, we and lose. they'd be able to, like, brainwash us with it. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't have done it. You killed my family member. God, you know, listen, I don't yeah. wish, I feel like justice was served, finally. Um, I don't Ten wish, years, though? It's better than nothing. I honestly thought they were going to let her go. And on parole, it'll be what? She's not going to do 10 years. Right. She's not going to do good behavior. She might do five, maybe. Five years. Maybe. Um, I have an issue. I take issue with that. And you think she's going to be general population? <laughs> um, I doubt it. I doubt it. Her people case is like way cops. too high profile. People don't like cops. It's high profile. Um, however, I do think they're going to go to extra lengths to protect her because she is a Caucasian woman. And, you know, She's a police officer. I just saw somewhere that the police officers union, I don't know from where particularly, they decided to back Donald Trump for the re-election. They must not have gotten the memo, they didn't get the memo. that he's about to be impeached. <laughs> so that backing was kind of ridiculous. Every day I wake up like, is he going yet? Is he going yet? Is he going you know yet? I get calls from the cops unions no. to donate money every time and I'm always like... Uh, I just donated last week. <laughs> Please take yeah, me off your list. Yeah, I don't want, want to be bothered. List. At this point, I do not want to be bothered. I don't know. I just... <sighs> What's going on, Shirley? <laughs> Mike Pence is going to be even worse, though. Like, I... He's but, implicated, though, in some of these impeachment yeah, accusations. Who comes next after the vice president? I the forgot. Speaker of the House Speaker of Representatives. Of the House, right? Speaker of the House, yep. I don't know. I just... <clears throat> but then that means that we're going to get... If they both get impeached, right... We are going to have a new Republican, which I think is better anyway. Yeah, maybe that's a good, it's a good way. You think? Yeah, it'll be a new Republican. That won't someone, want any trouble. Right. That someone was, on my social media threw out the name Mitt Romney. Remember him? I do remember Mitt. <laughs> I remember good old Mitt. Good old Mitt, right. At this point, we'll take anyone. We'll take any, anybody's better than Trump. Who do you like on the Democratic side? I don't like anyone, to be honest. Elizabeth um, Warren is my girl. I would have to say Elizabeth Warren. Um, I'm going to need Bernie Sanders to just go ahead and just step down. He's talking he about had, coming back after you didn't have heart Yeah, he surgery. had heart issues. Sir, it's okay. He's going to be at the debate on the 15th. Please go lay down, sir. I'm concerned. I need you from, to from his hospital bed? I need you to rest, sir. Imagine. <laughs> Live from the hospital okay. bed. Like, I can't. By the time he makes it, let's say he gets elected, right? How old will he be? 80? Not being you're ageist here. You're going to be popping nitroglycerin tablets while you're doing the, the debate? I mean, like, we saw how Barack Obama walked into the White House and how he came out. Aged. <clears throat> it takes a toll. It takes a toll. Stress takes a toll on you. Like, I actually, off topic. But speaking actually, of stress. Speaking of stress. <laughs> I'm seeing, like, people that I went to high school with, that I went to college oh with. Oh, my God. And I'm like, yo, what the? 
have you been doing for the past? How I feel the years? same way about people. Like I live in the town over from the town where I grew up. So if I'm ever in the supermarket, I always run into people that I went to high school with. It's hard out here. People they look, look rough. No offense, y'all, but. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they. No I'm, shade. No, no really, no saying, shade. Y'all, y'all look stop. crazy. <laughs> Some people look. <laughs> what is going like, on? They've let themselves go, and I get it. Life beats you up sometimes. I could kick your ass Kids, out maybe, here. right? But I've had over 100 kids a year. <laughs> Every day for nine to ten hours. I know you, you can't let yourselves go, y'all. Well, it's stress, is what I'm saying, especially in New York City. Lordy, like just just getting here. We barely got here today, sir. Again, the traffic and after a while, everything just starts to take a toll. You get the bags under your eyes. You get the gray hair. Like even I have extra gray hairs this week that I know I didn't have last month. And it's they're like coming. they're coming. They're coming for you. <laughs> I don't have one yet, but I'm sure. Well, you're a baby, sir. I'm sure they're coming. You're a baby. But what will I do? <laughs> I'm going to die those fuckers. <laughs> no, there's a pen. I have, actually have a pen. It's like whatever hair, whatever color your hair is. It's oh, a, nice. A pen, you take it, and you can just cover up the gray. Okay. And it lasts for like 48 hours or until you wash it. It's lit. <laughs> so I have, my, I have my actual hair out. Secrets of the trade. Secrets of the trade. And I'm like, okay. That's all the gray in the front. I'm like, this is not. I don't use kind of. It's a stressful city. It's a stressful city. It's stress, y'all. How's how's the traffic been getting to work each morning? Great. Now that I only work seven minutes away from my house. Does it take you that long to get there? No. It takes me about 40 minutes. Seven minutes. I live seven minutes away. It takes me 40 minutes to get there. What's the, like, what's the distance in terms of miles? It's like five miles away. It's ridiculous. And. I'm happy with 40 because remember at the other place it was taking me an hour. The other place. <laughs> so I'm thankful for 40 because the hour and 10 minutes was not cutting it. That was like awful. Yeah, it's And insane. I'm like always running late. So it's like if you leave one second past 7 or 7.15, it's a wrap for you. Yep. So, I've always placed myself on a later schedule than everybody else in my school. So I'm allowed to get there a little later. And trust me, I've been using every single minute that I'm allotted. <laughs> Because it takes me to go five miles. It takes about 40, 45 minutes. Five miles. Five miles. Do you hear what we're saying? Five miles. You should literally probably walk. And you'll be there faster, And be there right? faster. Or drive your, ride your bike. I can't. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> I wanted to say really quickly, um, yes, it is October. I love the fall. I love autumn. It just always makes me feel rejuvenated. But we also want to be mindful of what takes place. Um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I think people need to pick what charity or what cause resonates the most with them and take action. Because I feel like a lot of people just post you know, these memes and these, these, mm. these hashtags, but they don't really do anything. And it's mm. like, for me, it's always going to be domestic violence. Not, you know, no shade to anybody that advocates um, or help support the cause of cancer, because I also know people affected with that, unfortunately. But for me, I just feel that domestic violence probably touches more homes than cancer. And I feel like it just goes undiscussed, untouched every October. But I am actually having an event at the end of the month. And I decided that this year I wanted to do something a little different. I want to do more of like you invite yourself to my event. I don't want people just showing up because they want to eat our snacks and you know listen to people, you know spill their their tea and their business. I want people to inbox me, email me, call me if you have my number, and let me know if you want to attend and what you want to, to do. What are what are the details? To the um, event? Only the people that invite themselves will know. I'll, oh. po- I'll post the date and the time um, within the next few days. But, but in terms of location and um, it's gonna more than likely be in Harlem. There's two locations, actually, that I was thinking about doing, Harlem and the Bronx, but um, I got more responses so far from Harlem than I did in the Bronx, which is ironic because District 12 in the Bronx has the highest rate of domestic violence in the entire state. This no is what way. Be, but nobody wants to talk about it. So. It's crazy. So details to follow if you follow us on it's, social media. It's a very important cause. I feel like the, the remnants that domestic violence leaves behind have more of a toll on generations, mm-hmm. right? Because think about the trauma that the children, especially if there's children involved, 
they grow up seeing that a lot of times they become either perpetrators of it or victims. They become perpetrators And it, it continues, right? It's a cycle. It continues, and, and you never get over that. Like, I've witnessed... A lot of the guests that we've had on always talk about this trauma and stuff they saw at home and... Or things that on. they suffered not at the hands of romantic partners, but of parents, of parents. Siblings, friends can be abusive. And that's what you know, we want to talk about this year is that it's not always physical violence. Sometimes right. it's emotional. And that's probably worse. It is worse. Words probably hurt. Worse. Yeah. You know, words hurt. So um, the other thing, Lost the Legend, uh, was it two days ago, Diane Carroll passed away, dynamic, class act, you know, set the president for black women all over the world. We're losing them. We're losing them. And it's like nobody's filling these voids, these gaps. Uh, We're losing them. That we have. So, I don't know. But that one. They hit. That one hit hard because I remember, um, Charles, I don't know if you're old enough. Am I older than you? Our producer, but do you remember watching Dynasty in the eighties? I've seen, I've seen you Dynasty. You saw Dynasty. Yeah. It like changed my life. Yeah. That was the first time that I saw like a. That's Dallas. But it was a lot of those same But it was a thing of the time, yeah. actually. Like shows like that. Yeah. And I just remember watching her like, yo, because she had her first. What was her name on the show? Dominique Devereaux. That's right. Mrs. Devereaux. She yes. She was the only one she that could do Alexis. <laughs> she was fierce. Yeah, because Alexis was a... Alexis was a biatch. I loved Alexis, though. Her she character was, was fierce, too. But Mrs. Devereaux, though? She was the only one. That was the first time I saw that with a black woman. Mm -hmm. so, and she was classy. classy. And would read you without right. raising her voice, though. So. We'll talk about your caviar and... Burn champagne. Right. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> you tell you the clip that yes. It's burnt. Caviar. <laughs> this is bottle black caviar. I love it. But you know, I don't know. Who's going to who's going to take the torch? Who's, who's carrying the torch for these people? Um. Well, I don't know. I can't do it all. You can't do it all. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely um going to be someone rapping about getting the bag and they, hot they girl talk summer. about getting the bag and making the clap and you know I. I'm tired. Wiggling in. Wiggling. And <laughs> drop it like it's hot. You know, that's I, what they're rapping about. Nothing nothing of substance, I feel. There's nothing of substance. Who's, who's actually rapping about something that matters to our communities, right? We don't have any of that. That matters to our communities. I wish there was a woman rapper who was rapping about issues and making a political statement. Who was the last one we had? We had Lauren Hill. Badu. Um, we have Badu. But she's not a rapper. She raps, so she's not a rapper, technically. But that's it. Lauren can't be on time for nothing. so we. Lauren is trying to do it all. And isn't she, like, struggling with her tax stuff? She got some issues going on. She got some things that she needs to solve. She needs some business to take care of. But I think if I had to pinpoint, I think she was, like, the last goat of hip-hop. Who was it before that? Um, The fort, like, conscious rap? Um, maybe like Left Eye. I mean, Left Eye in and a few Latifa. songs with TLC back in the day. They were rapping about something <sighs> stuff that mattered. But I mean, like Latifa, actual rappers Latifa. that were talking about conscious. That's it. Issues. And this was in the eighties and nineties. Yeah, two thousand ninety. Dana Owens is the last one. Conscious black female rappers. Yes, that my mind raps. is like drawing a blank, but I'm. I can't count Little Cam and because you, man, you were rapping about Foxy Brown didn't do it. Stuff too. Let's talk about non coochie rappers. Right. I'm gonna say Latifa. And Trina Lauren. was not doing it. Trina wasn't doing it. Nicki most certainly wasn't doing it. Neither is Cardi. You know how I feel about Nicki. I love Megan The Stallion though. I love Megan The Stallion. She's a college girl. But she's talking about her coochie, sir. She is. But at least she's. <laughs> At least she's going to college during the daytime. Yeah, she she's a smart girl. But <laughs> so if like, I'm going to pick one, I'll pick Megan. I mess with Megan. I love Megan Thee Stallion. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, I need to hear something else. Like, yeah. I'm 42 They're not doing it. and I need to hear something else. They're not doing it. So our kids are growing up with a lack of role modeling, they right? Ride, what is it? Ride the, when they pour the Hennessy in their mouth, ride the boat or drive the boat? Is that what they call it? I haven't drive heard the boat. that. Drive the boat? What yeah. is that? They basically tip your head back and they pour, like, the economy size Hennessy down your throat and take huh. a shot spit from the bottle without putting your lips on. How do I know this and you don't know it? Oh my god. 
I don't even drink anymore. <laughs> but um, she Certainly. made that popular. What are they doing out there? And this is what your twelve year old like a like a waterfall. They used to call it a waterfall well, she pours before. It, she holds it. Oh lord. That's what our twelve year olds are listening. To. Shirley, who do we have on the show today? Because I'm I'm. We you know what our guest is running late because of <coughs> traffic, but we are uh, having the pleasure of having Miss Isha J. Author extraordinaire. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on. I'm excited to have her. And what we're talking about today is not only you know what she's doing, but we were <coughs> gonna focus on this token kind of taboo topic of this kind of silent rivalry that some his I'm gonna say some, some Hispanic women and some black women have with each other. Silent, it's not everybody, but it is definitely a problem. And um, it needs hmm. to be addressed. It needs to be addressed because we talk about it in our small circles, but nobody's really saying it like on national TV. Um, there was recently an, an episode of Basketball Wives. I don't watch the show anymore, but I saw clips on Instagram of where Evelyn Lozada got into a verbal, um, what do you call it? A verbal like a back altercation and forth. back and forth with OG, uh, the football players, Nigerian. And there were just a lot of racial slurs thrown in just the, the few clips that I saw. And a lot of people were in their feelings about it. And it's like we, we go back and forth on Instagram and, and Facebook, but nobody's addressing it like on national TV or, or on the radio. So that's what we wanted to talk about today. Um, hmm. We're actually going to take a quick break. As always, if you have a comment or a question, you are welcome to reach out to us on our Facebook pages or our Instagram, which is NY comment section. You're also welcome to give us a call at 347-640-3920. And we will be right back. The comment section. Stay tuned.
are back with the comment section. And we actually just got an alert uh, from the MTA that I guess someone tried to, or did kill themselves. Um, in, I don't know if it's on 125th or was it in Harlem, I don't know, but it's causing uh, jam. So just be on alert if you are watching us on live stream, just be on alert that the trains coming uptown are not running regular, um, in some cases not running at all. So, That's so sad. Sorry to hear that. Um, and it happens so often. It happens so often. We just lost the guy. The dad. With, he tried with the to little girl, right? The daughter. five-year-old, yeah. See, th these types of things disturb me because it's like, dude, if you want to kill yourself, just kill yourself. Why would you bring your child and why would you want to make the child's mother it's mental know, health, man. two losses? You think so? The there's person? a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of mental health just issues flying around that go unfixed for such a long time. And a lot of people don't even realize that, that they have something going on. They're in crisis, you know, so. But as we said earlier, our topic today hmm. is, um, oh, shout out to Emmanuel, who did go see the Joker before me. I'm sorry. <laughs> he texted me yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, that movie, I left there scared and paranoid. Really? I actually, as soon as the movie ended, we ran out of the theater because I was like, I can't stay in here. There's some sort of shooting that happens. Because the last shooting in the movie theater was after the was Dark after Knight. after the Joker. Oh, after the Dark Knight. I and forgot like Arizona about or that. Colorado or wherever that was. So I was kind of already paranoid during the movie, like looking around, seeing if anybody was acting kind of erratic, just because I feel like it's the perfect place to copycat. It's dark. You can copycat. Was it in Jersey or in New York? It was in Jersey. It was in Jersey. At the theater that's near our house, yeah. So we ran out of there. I've only heard good things. So I'm gonna, the I was movie, gonna well, the <laughs> movie itself focuses a lot on mental health issues. Like, that's the, that's the premise of the movie, right? This guy starts off very not sane. Like, you can tell that he has some issues going on, mm -hmm. kind of taking over him, but society makes him even, makes him even more tense and crazy. And so it's pretty much a story of how his mental illness goes from point A to point B, and he gets really out of control. Now I'm the Joker, bitch. Now I'm the Joker. <laughs> now I'm going to kill you if you cross me. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really, the performance is what I enjoy the most. I got Watching go. this man on screen is Joaquin like... Joaquin Phoenix, right? Joaquin freaking Phoenix. I gotta go. I gotta he go. was, I think that performance alone, I love, you know, I love film, I love mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. It is probably my top five favorite performance of all time. No, of all time? Of all time. Even better than The Color Purple? Of all time. <laughs> of all time. Shoot. Yeah, it was. I'm going to have to go sleep tonight. <laughs> please. Please go watch it. It was amazing, amazing, amazing. And people wow. are comparing him to the late Heath Ledger, but I feel like he was even better. He's better than Heath Ledger. A thousand percent. Yes. All right, I got to go. I might try please to Please go watch. Tomorrow. Guys, the, the transformation that this man makes in this movie is surreal. Really? The Battle family is like legendary. His Super brother, talented. That's what happens when you grow up in a cult. I know, right? That's what happens when you grow you up in a cult. Your acting skills and you get very creative. You tap into a part of your soul that will otherwise not be tapped into. Not be tapped into. So he probably thought about his days back in the cult, and he was like, you know, I got to pull I gotta get this out. some inspiration. And he's a method actor, too, which is, I gotta get this out. it also helps, right? I'm going. I'm going to try to go tonight. But we're talking about, <laughs> we are so You ain't going tonight. Deficit. You are not going I gotta, tonight. Listen, I have a birthday You have a party. bunch. There's late shows, you know. It's a late brunch, y'all. <laughs> I'm not doing this with you. It was supposed to be a brunch. It's a dinner now. But Shirley was like, I'm going to brunch after this. This is New York City. You can eat breakfast whenever you want. If you want to eat breakfast at 6 o'clock, you are right. welcome. Right, absolutely. Uh, we're so attention deficit. I can't. We're talking about <laughs> <laughs> the unspoken rivalry that exists between many Hispanic women, Latino women, and black women. And how in the world can two, we're the, we're the two largest minority groups. Mm -hmm. How and why is there strife? Is there tension? Like where the hell does this come from when we're basically fighting the same animal? We're fighting the same machine. And, you know, I tell people all the time in the Midwest, you don't, you don't really see that so much. I see it more in New York. I see it in Los Angeles where you have higher, um, 
percentages of Hispanics and Latinos that live there. But moving here, I'm like, this is really bizarre. I've never seen anything like it. And it seems like it's only, hmm. well, not only, but it's worse with women and, and in the relationships that women have with each other. So as a man, can you attest to this? Have you seen it or have you heard about such a thing? Absol absolutely. I've seen it my pretty much my entire upbringing because I did grow up in a community that was pretty much split down the middle. It was 50%. Latino, Hispanic, and then 50% African American. And I saw the immediate segregation Segregated. of girls, particularly girls, because the boys, it wasn't like that with them. They just want to play. But yeah, exactly. They would bond over, the boys would bond over sports or whatever the case was. But with girls, there was always something that just drew a wedge right between them, and it kept them apart. I Did you see it in Detroit? Well, we don't have a large Hispanic population. We literally have a section of Detroit. This is going to sound messed up, but it's called Mexican Village. And, and I'm sure it's not just Mexicans. No, right? it's probably Puerto Rican. It's Puerto Rican, Mexican. It's everybody, but it's called Mexican Village. It's in Southwest Detroit, hmm. and that's where like all the um, the eateries are, the Mexican restaurants are. They have amazing food. There's a little bit of culture there, but you, other than that, you really don't see a lot of Hispanic people. So growing up, your high school wasn't You're diverse. either black or white. Oh, wow. My high school. Was I mean, you also seven. went to a, like, your school, wasn't it like a magnet school or something? Yeah, it's like a, um, a magnet school or a IB school. And there was no Latino presence? I don't remember any Latino students being at Cast Tech. If there was, then they were ambiguous because. So I think historically that's like, it goes back to a certain ability to blend in. Like a lot of the Latino people who first arrived to the U.S. Mm -hmm. were very fair-skinned. They were fair-skinned. And they could blend in with the whites. And I think that's what happens a lot of the time. So. And know. I think there's, so the, the Hispanic population that I knew growing up in Jersey, they, a lot of them were a part of like ESL bilingual classes. So the language also was the difference that kept them apart from the African-American community. African you know, so I saw a lot of that. It was the language and the, I guess the culture in general was just yeah. too different. I, we were trying to pinpoint this. So I, I, I've done some like reflecting to see like, how do I feel like, do I have these biases? And like, where, why, why am I so sensitive to it? Because I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. I'm not dark skin, I'm not light skin. Mm. Um, so I feel like I can navigate between groups easily without, you know, anybody being suspicious or, or thinking that I don't belong or I don't fit. But I see it in elementary and I see it in middle school. It's and the same where we teach. Where we teach. Yep. And I'm going to step out on a limb and say that it, it's more of a colorism issue. Absolutely. It's more of uh, ignorance about black culture. Um, the stigma that has been attached to being and stereotypes, stereotypes, and you know things that are attached to being black. Black is ugly. You're nappy. You know you guys can't grow hair. You're dirty. You know these are things that I've actually heard kids say or girls say to other girls. And it also goes back to boys mm -hmm. and how boys respond, particularly black boys respond to fair skinned girls or girls of different ethnicities. Um, the fairest skinned girls are considered to be pretty, they're considered to be the ones that you covet, those are the ones you want to date. So if you are a brown skinned girl and you see this and you're seeing it from age zero to however old you are when you start you know, developing your, uh, your belief systems about beauty, how could you not have resentment towards that group when you're always told you're ugly, you're not good enough, I don't want you, you know. And it gets worse the older you get too. Because, like, if you think about it, elementary school kids or, like, four- and five-year-olds, they're not yet, they haven't been conditioned to see those differences and resent each other for, yeah. for that, right? But the older they get, like, high school-age kids, they're already in full mode when it comes to being able to separate themselves from others that don't look like them. That or don't look like them. Who don't share a culture as they do, you know, and there's a lot of resentment that there's happens. a lot of resentment and a lot of pain that just never gets dealt with and it starts to spill over into other parts of these people's 
live. So I um, was prompted to talk about this. I was, like I said, I was watching the clips of Basketball Wild. What happened on the in the clip? Um, in the clip, uh, I don't like I, said, I didn't watch the full episode, but from what I could ascertain, Evelyn and OG were in a heated argument about. Um, Evelyn's ex-husband, Chad Ochocinco, who is dark-skinned football player. They were married. He cheated. There was a domestic violence situation that happened, and they're now divorced. But basically, OG was saying, well, you know, by the way, your ex-husband was in my DMs. He wanted to date me, you know, while he was married with you, and I declined. And was this recent? This was recent. This was, like, last week or a week before last episode. Wow. And, um... To make a longer story shorter, Evelyn was basically just, like, throwing all these insults at her. Like, you know, nobody wants you. You're dirty. Um, you're ugly. So OG's going at her like, I'm ugly, but you, you wanna... are here in cornrows. And you are Oof. getting ass implants and boob implants to look like my body, which is natural because she's from Nigeria. She's like, my ass is real. My boobs are real. You're trying to be like me. And she literally had cornrows, Evelyn. So she's like, who's trying to imitate or emulate who? But I'm ugly. But I'm ugly. And I'm like, why did, why did she have to go for ugly? OG's very dark skin. So she has like traditional <laughs> features of an African person. She has big lips, big nose, dark skin. So the only insult she could throw at her was you're ugly and you're dirty. And it's like... She should have just said, you know, what she really wanted to say. What she really wanted to say. You're black. You're black. Thank you. That's what she really wanted to say. You're yeah. black and you're ugly. You're black and you're ugly. Or you're ugly because you're black. You're ugly because you're black. But that's that's such a, like, I've seen it so much with Hispanic women that they feel like they have that upper hand they do. over African Why or African-American women, women. Because they've been conditioned to think that their skin color makes them better. Conditioned by who? It's historic society. Society. It's society. Like, in the Dominican Republic, especially, there was a dictator in the 50s and 60s who wanted to get rid of anyone who was dark skinned. So Dominicans in particular, yes, the darker you were, the uglier you were, they ostracized you from society, they would kill you. And it became a part of their, like it became so ingrained in their culture that many of the people who are from the Dominican Republic have now brought that part of their history to their communities here in the US. Got it. You know, so even though they have African in their blood, they refuse to admit it. They don't want to admit that. Even if they're black, even if, and I've seen this from numerous students who don't want to claim their African ancestry. They don't want to. Because there is something that they grew up with that told them that they would never be able to do that or shouldn't do that. That's what I wanted to talk about as well. In the same clip, well, in the post interview, because Evelyn is Puerto Rican, is she Puerto Rican and Dominican? We always thought she was Puerto Rican and Dominican because that's all we saw. So now she's labeled herself Afro-Latina. And so they're like, wait a minute. You never called yourself Afro-Latina before. Why are it's, you it's, now it's all a of a trendy, sudden? It's a trendy topic. It's a trendy word to use. It's trendy. And I feel like, and I'm just going to be honest, I feel like um, everybody wants to capitalize off of black culture. You know, the hair, the body structure, um, the you know, the jive, the talk, the slang, but at the end of the day, nobody wants to be called a black person. So what I've seen is also... Money, so everybody want to be an N-I-G-G-A, but nobody want to be an N-I-G-G-A. Yeah, so what I've seen, and just to go along with that point, is that everybody does want to be a part of this African experience, right? Everybody wants to be it. Because it's, cool, right? it's, it's the trend. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it, like if all African descendants and all people who are African American go down in flames, I wonder how many of these people claiming to be Afro Latino or Latino will be what side left standing. Are you on? What side? Because I don't have an issue with it. And like um, the kid that yeah. won the um, the award for the documentary, the yeah, he's Afro, Afro Dominican. He's Afro Latino, mm -hmm. but he says I identify as being black. And he's like, I know that, you know, my mom or whoever is Dominican, grandma's Dominican, but he's like, I feel like I, I identify as black. I have no problem with that because when I see him, I see a black man. And I don't think that you should deny, you know, your, your Latino side. But if you have the, your skin is darker than me, 
If your black. hair is curlier than mine, your lips black. are bigger than mine, tell so you're black. Ma'am, you're black. So I think that it's important to also like point out the difference between your race mm -hmm. and your ethnicity, right? Yes. Because racially, you could be black or you yes. could be mixed. Like racially, I'm mixed. Yes. I'm indigenous, Native American, Native South American, mm -hmm. right? I'm African, but I'm also European and I'm a mix of those three. You're mixed. So racially, I'm very mixed. I've met black people who are my skin color or lighter. Mm -hmm who happen to have a different hair texture than me, you know, so who's to say that I'm not black or... I'm not. So I think it depends on the individual, but I've also noticed that in conversations with my friends who are African-American, a lot of times they feel like when people who are Latino are claiming to be black, they're especially saying, like they're saying I'm African-American. Mm -hmm. So because I'm saying I'm black, I'm not claiming to be African-American, I'm just saying that I have African in my blood. I have African in my blood. You know, and I think that's okay, too. I, I, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who is, she's half black, right? And I won't say her other half because I'll, I feel like I'll, I'll be throwing some shade. But <laughs> she, um, we had a huge debate and discussion about it. And I think it was very enlightening for her because at the end of the day, like, when you look at her, she's very light-skinned, mm -hmm. you know? And we look very much alike, yeah. but she can identify as black. She can identify as black. Because she's half black. Because she's half but black. But then when I want to say I'm black or part People black, have a with it. they're like, well, you're not black. And I'm not talking about being African American. <laughs> I'm just saying that I have some African in my blood. You do? And you do. And I do. My sister always says it, you know, like, it's, we are all pretty much the same. Like, if you're from North America, the Caribbean, Central and South America, right? The only thing that's different is where the ship dropped off your ancestors. I tell my students that all the time. I said, that's the only difference. Enslaved, two men, they so came on the same ship, the same ship just and they were just place, dropped off. Different area. Dropped off in different places. That's what makes all the difference. I think part of the problem is black people in America, it's almost like, okay, if everybody's able to claim that they're black, but nobody wants to claim it. But nobody tells it. Where does that flames. leave us? Because we're the only race of people that can't, unless you have, like, my, like in my case, a dad or a mom who came directly from Africa, you really can't trace where you came from. So it's kind of like we don't really belong anywhere. So then when you have someone who all of a sudden wants to say, well, I'm Afro-Latino, I'm Afro-Latina, it's like, no, you're taking something from me. Or if you, for example, want to say, I'm black, then it's like, so then what am I? And how mm -hmm. do you get to say that you're black and fit into all these different circles, but I'm stuck in a box. Like, I can't, I don't have the hyphen. I can't say I'm Afro-Latina. I don't have that hyphen there, which gives me the ability to switch it up when I want to. Mm -hmm. So um, I see it so a lot I, of times on Instagram. I think there, that word needs to be... We need to get rid of all of it. We need to get rid of it because I think that the best descriptor is just mixed, like... We're I'm mixed. I'm mixed racially. It sounds really corny. And, and I say that to my kids because I feel like we are, we are claiming something that may not be apparent by just looking at me. And it's, and it's convenient. <laughs> and it's really convenient. It's convenient. Because you use it to your advantage when you're in certain circles. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure Evelyn is using that on the show because the majority of the cast is black. The majority of the cast like is black. Like African American or they African. Even, they took it a step further and I actually have to go back now and, and watch some of the old clips. They were like, wait a minute. They have the issue with Shawnee O'Neal because they're like, every time there's a fight, the dark skin cast members never get the same protection and they never go to the same lengths to resolve the issues. Whereas if it's a light skinned person that's being bullied or being attacked, it's like, oh wait, no, this person has to be thrown off, you know, we have to get security in. It's like and I, I noticed that the other day in the clip. It's a bias. They attack the dark skinned person and it's just a kind bias. of leave them for dead when so I I have issue with that. And I, I, I might have to send Shawnee a little email. It's a, it's a huge <laughs> mirror image of what's going on in society. What happens though. in society. It's like, like a lot of these shows are very telling of how society treats it's its people. Life. And um, I don't know. I, I get offended, actually. Last thing I wanted to touch on. <laughs> I get very offended when I see people of other races do things in the name of community service or for their job or here for we entertainment. Go. You know what I'm about to here say. Here we go. 
And all I see on your team, dear white person, Hispanic, mm. Latino person, whoever you are. Asian. Asian. <laughs> all I see on your team are black women and black men. If you have a cause, if you have yeah. something that you are campaigning for, you're using your platform to fight against something, where are your people? Where are the other people supporting you? Why is it always black women? Everything falls on our back. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I posted about it a couple weeks ago on my Instagram. It's like, you use it, but then you don't want to be attached to that off. unless it's cool. Yeah, you know what you I mean? Drop and, off. and even like the black athletes that, that choose to marry outside of their race, it's like, yo, you got all these sisters that supported you when you were broke and you had nothing, and then it's the minute you get a dollar, I want the lightest thing I can find. Or I want this, is, this is the way that it's always been, though. Why, Emmanuel? I really don't know. It's like an age-old situation and phenomenon. <laughs> because for as long, I mean, I've been around 34 years, right? I've always noticed that this is like the vibe that people were, this is the vibe. I'm tired of it. It's pretty sick. And I, just, I feel like, like I said, I thought it was corny at first, but I think we just need to get rid of all labels. We're human beings. That's all. We are human beings. We're humans. I think that would eliminate a lot of the foolishness. And everybody has a second. If you... Want to date life friend? That's the question. If you want to date life friend, that's the question. I just think yeah. we need to eliminate all the titles, and then maybe we can try to unify. And you know, um, what I must say though is, I in the same like, the same kind of discussion, right? Like, I feel maybe the same about people who claim to be Latino, who mm-hmm. are half Latino and half white, mm-hmm. who didn't have the same experience that I had. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, I feel some type of way about. People claiming to be Latino when you grew up like in a different environment. You don't know the struggle. <laughs> you don't like you passed for white your whole life, and now you want to claim to be now Latino. You want to claim to be Latino because it's it's cool. Yep, but I have a test for them though. You have test. What's the test? I always ask them like three questions, like who is Cristina, <laughs> right? If you're if you're really Hispanic, like who is Cristina? Who is El Chavo? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Who is Don Francisco? Like, if you cannot answer me those questions, <laughs> not you're not ass. Hispanic, that sweetie. You're hilarious. white. So you're I have a test for that ass. Yeah. <laughs> I, have a t- I have a test. <laughs> What'd you say? El Chapulín Colorado. Who, who is that? What time did he come on? That is hilarious. Yeah, no, you got to put them to a test. I know what Christina was. I remember Christina. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you can't just walk around claiming certain things. You can't just start claiming stuff. You no. have to... It's just like when the rich people are saying they're struggling. The kids, I was struggling. Yeah, or I had a conversation with a coworker that kind of pissed me <laughs> off, but I was trying to be very political about right. it. In the race and diversity circle, where we talk about our past and our traumas uh-huh. and how that shows up at work, uh-huh. I was speaking about my experiences in my job, where I felt like I was being targeted in a way for being a Hispanic yes. male, and even if it wasn't the case, that's a trauma that I've had to grow up with, grow up with that. because I've experienced ever since I stepped into stepped into college I was in white circles at all times it was like a mainstream white world Mm -hmm. so I've always had to like learn to get over that Mm -hmm. but it's hard when you've always been you're a token or you're told that you're not good enough or you feel like you don't speak well enough to be there right so this person tried to talk about her socioeconomic status as a white woman having grown up on welfare to try to equate herself to my experience as a immigrant man of color. Ma'am, you still have white privilege. It's white privilege, right. So I feel like this conversation is so multifaceted. It's got so many levels. Because it's color, it's experience, it's socioeconomic status, it's your outer appearance, it's you know, like it's a lot of different elements that bring it all together. That bring it all together, and I, I guess colorism would be at the the center of it, but the other. I feel like that's the. Over, it's definitely the main one. It's the main one. It's the main one, because there's a lot of like people in my circle now who claim to be Afro. Latino or Latina, but you look at them, and you're like, dude, you're kind of white. <laughs> well, you're very light skin. Like, you should not be claiming even Latino is questionable. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Let alone the Afro. <laughs> That's questionable. Well, I, was, I was gonna say, like, I think with girls and women, it becomes such 
an issue and it, it, it culminates into a rivalry because of men, particularly black women, and the very scarce amount of viable, available black men, available straight men <laughs> that we have to choose from. I think if we had more black men that were not in jail, that were not gay, that were not short. <laughs> Slim pickings, my dear. It w- we wouldn't care and the rivalry wouldn't exist. It's like we're competing for the same three men. And so now we get very offended when, you know, two of the three men that we have to choose from decide to date white women or Latino women or Asian over women. us. Or even now Asian with this whole Jeannie Mai and Young Jeezy thing. That's a whole other can of worms. People are in their feelings about that. And I'm like, I personally, I'm not a Jeannie Mai fan. I, I'm sorry. She, <laughs> she says it most, not because of her being Asian, but because she says a lot of derogatory things. And then she tries to go back and backtrack and clean it up. I, I was done with her when she was married to the white Republican. And she said, oh, but you know, I like to keep dark meat on the side. Because we were like, wait a minute. And even her castmates were like, what do you mean? She's like, oh, well, I'm going to marry white meat. But I always used to keep dark meat on the side. This was like two or three years ago she said that. Yeah, she's she needs to be canceled. And she tried to clean it up. And then now it's like, we all knew you were dating Jeezy. Because I have friends that run in her circle. And they're like, we already knew that they were messing around. So now they're out and open with the relationship. But it's like, now that you're divorced from the white Republican, or he divorced you, whatever mm-hmm. case may be, now you want to flaunt young Jeezy like he's a piece of jewelry. So people take issue with him because it's like you couldn't find anybody else. That's the only person you could find to date. And I wonder when we'll be able to to really answer that question. Like, why do black men prefer not all, it's obviously, not all. but why do they prefer to date outside of their but race? But it's enough that it's an issue, or not even just outside the race. They just want the, if not white or or Latino or Asian, it's the closest thing that I can get to that. Anything other than an easily recognizable black woman. That's what we take issue with because there's just not a lot to choose from. And it's like we're using black women as mules to work, to run a house, to run a corporation, to do all of this legwork, but they're going home alone after they've helped and done for everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. they go home alone. Like most, most of my friends are single, educated, beautiful, no kids, no felonies, slim, big boobs, big butt. Anything that you're looking for, they have, have yeah. They go home alone. We should start a dating service. That was, that was my next thing. I'm like, maybe we need to... We should start a dating service because there are men out there looking for what well, we have to offer. Oh, they're short. Or broke. Or oh, broke. Imagine. <laughs> I, and ever since I met you, Shirley, like, I always felt kind of, because we never spoke about this in my gay relationship, because I'm dating a black man. How do you feel about that? Man. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's probably watching. Man, he's lit. Like, I, I'm sorry. I said man <laughs> on camera. He looks cool. He's cool. Oh, you never met him, Charles. You got to meet him. He's, yeah, he's, he's a cool he's dude, cool. and I don't have an issue with their relationship because they're perfect for each other. I wonder how many gay black men are how looking at our relationship. How many black women are looking at your relationship hating you? Both of them, yo. He's being hated by a lot. He's like, oh, wait, they both beautiful. <laughs> Thank I you. Said, <laughs> I, like, I love them together. I don't have, I don't feel the way at all. But, but I'm sure people out there I'm do. I'm sure people see you guys out and are like rolling their eyes, sucking their oh, teeth. Oh yeah. Um. Definitely. It's it's a lot. I feel like this conversation we could have an entire season just talking about what we've seen, what we what we've experienced. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on it. I, the, the clip kind of struck a nerve with me. I feel like yeah. Evelyn has problems though. To be honest, I feel like Evelyn has a long past of dating black men, Mm -hmm. but not really loving her African identity all the while. Not only that, but using, I'm going to call it her Hispanic or her Latina privilege to get into these circles and and capitalize off of it. You know, her only retort back to OG, other than you're ugly, is I have good you know what, and I have good credit, and your boyfriend wants to F my you know what. And we're like, ma'am, how old are you, number one, that you're talking like this on television? And two, that's the only thing that you could say good about she yourself. She's in her 50s. She if has she's to be not right. in her 50s, she's knocking on 50. If she's yeah, been in these streets a while, and it's like, 
if that's all you have to define yourself is your vagina and your looks, you, you're in trouble because there's so much more that you could offer. I actually that's met sad. Evelyn, um, I don't know, about six months ago. She had a book signing. She's nothing like what she shows on, on television. TV, right? I had a conversation with her about, you know, working with the girls since I teach in the Bronx, which is predominantly she's, Hispanic. She's she, from the Bronx. She was on board with it. Gave me the contact information I haven't heard from her since. And it's like, I'm teaching in the, the neighborhood that you grew up in. Yet, where are you? Where are any Hispanic women in the media in the area where you're needed the most? These girls are, are suffering. They're chasing athletes, honey. Evelyn's chasing, chasing athletes. Chasing athletes? Okay. She has problems. She has, she has her own issues. Love you, Evelyn. <laughs> hey, boo. <laughs> hey, boo. Call me. <laughs> no, but please, stop, guys. Let's stop with the ignorance. Let's Can we talk with... about this? I want to talk about this topic more. I like, feel like it needs to be addressed time. a couple of times, you know, within this season because there's levels to it. And we can't resolve it, of course, in one show. But I want to at least start the dialogue and have people talk about it. Um, Maybe we'll do a workshop or something. <laughs> we should. Thank you guys so much. We are out of time. It's happy. It's, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back. I got to have happy fun. Happy to be back. You know, the show is fun for Season me. two. Season two, bitches. We're here. We're chasing, we're chasing the bag in season two. We're chasing the bag. We got a lot of amazing <laughs> things going on that we can't get talked yep, about. We can't. But um, the bags are coming. The They're bags coming are coming. In. These money bags. <laughs> money bag, yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys have an amazing rest of uh, the weekend. Again, 347-640-3920. If you ever want to reach us, you can reach us on Instagram at NY Comment Section and on our Facebook page at the Comment Section. And we are out. Bye. <laughs>